Well, good morning everybody. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning service and a special welcome to those of you who are watching this online, either live or the recorded version. Uh, please uh, press the subscribe button, the thumbs up button, sorry that's not subscribe. Um, That's the one. Yeah, I yeah, like it. I like it. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. So please press the like button. Uh, please subscribe. And um, I was reminded by watching a video that Freddie did the other day, and he was explaining that, of course, subscribe doesn't mean you pay money. It's actually a free subscription. So please subscribe, and then you'll get notifications uh, of all of our uh, channel happenings, really, particularly our services. So, thank you. Uh, welcome again. So, a special welcome to you lot. It's a nice crowd this morning. It's very good. And we're getting closer to freedom, aren't we? Yay! Yay! Um, not quite there yet, but we are getting there, so that's good. So, um, welcome, of course, special welcome to Freddie and Jane. Lovely to have you with us again. And, um, Freddie is with us this morning, and I said to him earlier, I'm actually quite intrigued by his title, A Time to Be Silent, because I can't really imagine Freddie being silent. I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> and I, I, that's right, I wondered if he was going to stand for half an hour and say nothing. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Okay, so we'll move on to our time of worship, and we're going to start with Blessed Be Your Name, because it's good to bless the name of Jesus. Yeah? Amen. Amen.
Uh, Colin's got some notes. Well, good morning from him, and it's good morning from me. Well, good night from somebody, wouldn't it be thought? Great to see you, either in reality or uh, see, well, we can't see you, you can see us, but uh, Freak Bears is very uh, It's great to see Freddie this morning. You know, Freddie was uh, our pastor until 18 months ago. A previous pastor is celebrating his 90th birthday today. John Glover is 90 today. Uh, if you're on Facebook, uh, you know if you knew John, uh, then you can perhaps send him greeting. I've sent him one on behalf of the church, uh, and I'm sure he's uh, enjoying his uh, birthday. Don't think he's preaching. I wouldn't be surprised if he was preaching somewhere, because he was until uh, lockdown. But uh, remember John today. Um, just to say also, it's good to see Paul. And, uh, and also, that uh, just to remind, we can't give names out generally, people that... Uh, uh, one person is having a minor op this week. Two are visiting uh, they're either a specialist or they're a doctor. Uh, if you want to know details, I can tell you individually if you like afterwards. But I uh, do remember folk within our church, people who are part of the church, who are, uh, aren't too well and are seeing their uh, specialist or doctor this week uh, regarding their future treatment. Next Sunday, on the first of all Wednesday, remind you about Bible study. That will be here and online. Chapter 5 of Esther. Uh, and then next Sunday, something slightly different. Next week, we're all going to the Baptist Assembly. Don't get too excited. Um, uh, we're not literally going. I'm not sure yet where it is. Uh, but uh, next Sunday, we'll start at half past 10. So you've got to go up half an hour earlier next week. Uh, so half past 10 until 12. It'll be a bit longer service. Uh, and we're going to have that relayed here. I'll uh, send out details uh, anyway to you. Uh, others who want to follow other meetings during that weekend, you can do via links. Uh, but we'll be doing it together here. Uh, the preacher is American Shane Claiborne, who is, uh, I've heard, uh, preach and uh, is well worth listening to. Uh, very active in the community. Something I think which uh, will be a a strong point when uh, Peterson comes, I think he wants us to get involved with the community as we indeed do ourselves. Uh, that's what we're here for. So next Sunday, 10.30, I will send emails out to remind people. But for those of you that perhaps watch us online, uh, we'll be ready and starting a little earlier next week, 10.30. God bless. Interesting, as far as I'm aware, churches are the only organisations that exist for the benefit of non members. Mo you know, most organisations exist for the benefit of the members, don't they? You know, if you, if you join the sailing club, the sailing club, you know, exists for the sailors, as it were. But churches exist for people that don't come, sadly. Um, it doesn't mean that we ignore the people that do come, of course. Um, at least I hope we don't. If we do, let me know and we'll try and change that. Uh, but I don't believe we do. Okay, we'll move on to our next song and we're going to worship God by singing about the goodness of God. Because God is still good. He hasn't changed. Amen. <laughs>
exactly what I do. I just make a joyful noise, but, but okay. But uh, yeah, as I say, it, um, I, I also like the idea, and I've said this before I know, but I think it's worth repeating. I like the idea of God's goodness running after me. Yeah? And God's goodness is still running after you and me, which is great. Okay, we're now going to welcome the Holy Spirit, and then we'll have Thank you. 
I was going to offer a time of prayer, but uh, the clock is beating me, and I, I want to give Freddie as much time as possible. Um, so, uh, before Freddie comes to speak, uh, Jane is going to read a scripture, so can you be uh, standing by with the mic? <laughs> Good morning, it's lovely to be with you all. Um, before we came here, Freddie and I were at Suncoast Church at their first service this morning, and Rob, the pastor there, said, make sure you send my greetings and blessings to New Hope. So that is what I'm doing. And what is so lovely is that we can be there and feel totally at home, and we can come here and feel totally at home. Because at the end of the day, we're just one big family, yes. so it's just lovely to be together. Um, the reading today is from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar, and be troubled, though the mountain shake with its swell. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nation raged with the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the, the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. One second. We'll get there. So yes, a time to be silent, and I've already said that, uh, so I'm not going to say anything <laughs> the whole time. And that might be good news for some. We've joined the Quakers. <laughs> a time to be silent. And yeah, Jane has just read that wonderful psalm, mm -hmm. Psalm 46. And verse 10, where it says, Be still, and know that I am God. But well, that's not what I'm preaching about. Okay. Uh, be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And uh, we've, we've talked on that in the past, and uh, we're not talking on that list today. I just want to say that... Um, a little clue where we might. Silence! The noise of dance. Here you are, Diana. Hebrews 11.30. By faith, the walls of Jericho <laughs> fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the, it's a great cameo text, isn't it? He, he would, for memorization, Hebrews 11, verse 30. Hebrews 11, verse 30. By faith, 
the walls of Jericho fell down after they were in circle for seven days. Let me just give you a bit of info uh, about those walls. Where are they? The walls of Jericho were five and a half feet thick, or 1.5 meters thick, wide. And they fell out. The walls that were stopping the people of God moving. Moving. Where? Where are we moving? Not backwards. We're moving forward. We're moving forward. So Joshua chapter 6 is our reading, but we're not reading it because there isn't time, but read it, put it down, put it as homework, write notes. We, as Jane has said in the, uh, in the reading just now, we've just been in uh, Suncoast, and I, I always take notes. And I thought, if it's a better sermon than I'm doing now, I'll have that one. <laughs> I always take notes. I always engage my mind. Because I'm going to silence the noise of doubt and speak and learn to speak the language of faith. But Joshua 6, 1 to 20, that's when God tells Joshua, here you are, this is what you're going to do. You're going to take this city. It's yours. God says... He has given us all things. He's blessed us richly with everything in Christ Jesus. But we have to go and take it. Yes. See, there's a New Testament. Yes. Well, God has given us everything. So some people, the passive, the people who are passive, they just say, well, no, I've got everything, so I'll just wait. Well, I say don't hold your breath because it won't happen. We have to press in. Yes, we have to silence the enemy. Ministries. Of course, what a time to launch a ministry when we go into lockdown. And the enemy says, uh, Where's that going to go? And I go, Shh. <laughs> now you listen to me. Silence, whatever it is. And so God gives um, Joshua some instructions. We don't know how much of the instructions he passed on, but he did tell them what they shouldn't do. He told them what they could do, what they shouldn't do. But, and so you'll see it there. And God said to him that you were to, you were to march round every day. You have the ark, the, the, you have the priests, they're going to blow the shofar. And you do that once a day. But the, tell the people to be quiet. A time to be silent. Ecclesiastes 3 7. There is a time to be silent. Tell the people to not to open their mouth. So there's the key points. In those verses, 1 to 20, are listening, obeying, succeeding. Say that with me, because you can't speak out loud. You can't sing, but you can't. <laughs> listening, <laughs> obeying, <laughs> succeeding. This is how we want to succeed. Anybody in this room don't want to succeed in life? I'll do your funeral. Of course we all want to succeed. We want to succeed. We want our family to succeed. We want, to, we want our children to succeed. We want our grandchildren to succeed. Come on. I want this church to succeed. I want this next ministry to go to the next level and the next level. We all want success. I mean, it's, it's not a dirty word. Western, I don't know, wokeism. Now I've said it. So, politi try to be politically correct. 
The only PC about me is I'm a powerful Christian. Amen. <laughs> All I know is seeking to be. We want to, to, to succeed. We need to listen to God. We need to obey what He says and step into His blessing. Listening. Joshua listens to God's instruction. Later on, Solomon says to his son, my son, Proverbs 4, 20, and verse 22, my son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. You know, listen to Derek Prince on this, this is brilliant on Proverbs 4, 20, 22. And God's healing is in the bottle. It's a great message. He won't plug my stuff because he's rejoicing in heaven. <laughs> but it's, I plug it in because it's worth listening to. It's worth drawing from. He says, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those that find them. And health to all their flesh. Listening what the father is saying the father speaks to the three disciples on the mount of transfiguration when they have this wham bam experience and they see Moses and Elijah and, and all the stuff goes on and all that fades down, Moses and Elijah is no longer there, it's Jesus and the father speaks oh. the father instructs the disciples and he said this is my beloved son. Listen to him. I've been doing uh, some talks on a Tuesday. It's become nicknamed now the Tuesday Talks on Facebook. If you're on Facebook and you want to watch or watch the recorded version, come and join me. It would be great. Uh, I talked about conversations on a recent talk. And I state the obvious in that talk. We have two of these and one of those. We have two ears and one mouth. What's that mean? We listen twice as much as we talk. Listen to him. The instructions. God says, tell people, march around the walls for six days. And on the seventh day, march around seven times. So that's 13 times. So it, in verse 10 it says, Now Joshua commanded the people. He says, Do not shout a battle cry. This is from the modern English version. Do not shout a battle cry. Do not let your voice be heard. Do not let a word come out of your mouths until the time I say to you, Shout the battle cry. Then... Oh, can you imagine that now? Imagine that. Imagine if your new pastor would say, you do what I tell you, when I tell you, you preach. <laughs> In our Western individual non-submissive. But listen, if we want to succeed in life, we have to listen to those who need. We have to believe that they're hearing from God. Yes. Yes. And obey and put in practice. Jesus, in his resurrection appearance on Matthew 28, he said to observe or obey everything I command. Obedience is not a nice word in our Western individualistic they can't tell me what to do society. But we as the people of God are not of the world. We as the people of God are those who are submitted to God, aren't we? We are listening to God and we're seeking to obey God. And as we do, we will succeed. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. So the instructions that Joshua's given. Why, why weren't they allowed to talk? 
It's a really interesting one. Why was it now, you see the wall in the background of that image? Why? Because they've got a crack there. Why couldn't they speak? Well, it's a possibility. And I surrender it, and others do as well. Forty years earlier, they allowed themselves to be taught out of yes. going into the land. Yeah. Chapter and verse, Numbers 13, 31, 33. Yeah. What did they do? They sent the 12 tribe, the 12 spies in, I should say, and they came back. And they said, it's a brilliant land. But, oh, you'll never do it. Oh, let me translate that. Church will never be the same again now. People will never come back. But the two, the two with a good report. They said, you know, yeah, there's giants. Yeah, it looks impossible. But we are well able, friends. And they tried to get them to silence the noise of doubt. But they wouldn't listen. They went along rather with popular opinion. And that popular opinion became the loudest voice. In churches, denominations, and uh, around, in some areas, popular opinion is the loudest voice. What the, what, and the popular opinion in churches, in some circles, is that they're following what the world says. Well, I can't follow that. They might be nice people, they might be sincere people, but I can't follow that. I want, to live, I want to follow somebody who's had some instruction from God. And I want to put that instruction, I want to listen to that instruction. And I want to obey it because I want to succeed in life. And, and the younger I get, the bigger the dreams. I, I mean, I, as young as I am, I'm thinking about my mortality more these days. You understand what you're saying? I'm thinking about that. And I'm thinking, okay, so uh, how long, Lord? I want to make this time count. I want to make this day count. I want to make this week count. I want to make this month count. I want to make this year count. I want to make the next five years. Come on. The popular opinion had become the loudest voice. Here's the notes from the New Spirit-filled Life Bible. The memory that Israel's 40-year punishment in the wilderness was a result of the people's murmuring in unbelief was doubtless in Joshua's mind. At that time, the spies had returned with a report motivated by what man sees without the Holy Spirit given vision. Their unbelief that they could take the land had sealed their fate, that they couldn't take the land had sealed their fate in the wilderness. Now, with the lessons of history in mind, Joshua's directed to keep silent in precaution, the precaution that teaches us. When we're facing the challenges, do not permit your lips to speak unbelieving words. Prohibit demoralizing speech from your lips. Words can bite up yes. or set free. Yes. Right. If you can't say nothing good, <laughs> damn me, isn't it? Don't say nothing at all. If you, but I'm not saying that we, we won't go through periods of down. Of course we will. It's what we, how we navigate through those Seasons. You may be going through a terrible season right now, but it's how you navigate through that. Come on. I say, shh. Actually, if I, if I'd love to share some of the dreams I had. And the enemy goes, ha! I go, shh. 
excuse me, because I'm going on what God says. That's the kind of silence. It's not a passive silence. I've been in a few of those sort of prayer meetings that help insomnia. <laughs> Well, that kind of silence. It's a pregnant anticipation. Can you imagine what it was like? They obeyed. Each day they set out and marched round the walls. <laughs> what was that like? Well, they heard the sound of their own feet. That's what they heard. Can you hear your feet marching? They're marching. That's what they heard. They would have heard the people on the walls who were near enough would have been looking over to see what's going on. They would have heard them maybe jeering them. As we do. You Christians, you don't believe in the creation of God, do you? You don't mean to say in six days. As one creationist said to me once, he said, yeah, I believe that. What, what took him so long? I mean, it's only God. <laughs> you don't believe that when you simply put your trust in Jesus and ask him to forgive you and cleanse you, he gives you a brand new start and a brand new spirit. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, the devil does He believes it, but he doesn't want you to believe it. That's what they heard. And they heard their own feet. And what did they see? They saw the ark. What was in their vision? They saw the ark being carried. Now, doing the study on the ark. The ark of God, it was t they were told how to make it. What, how exact uh, specifications and as you see this beautiful building God told Jane exactly how could this no <laughs> but they gave them this special specifications for the size of it and it would and then uh, plate it with gold and the cherubim on the top and inside it was God's it represented God's presence, God's power, God's provision, and God's protection. It represented God's presence here on earth. This is probably why the ark is no longer visible anywhere. It's still around, but we don't know where it is. Probably in heaven, who knows? That's a study in itself. Because we don't need to see God in a box anymore. In fact, God does not like living in a box. He doesn't want to live in your box, New Hope Church. He doesn't want to live in your box, whoever you are, individual. He wants to break out the box. Hallelujah. But it represented his presence. So when I saw that being carried, I knew the presence of God was there. The presence of God. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. For I'm with you to the end of the age. The Hebrew writer says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the pioneer of our faith. The, it, the power of God, it, because in the bo box there was the rod of Aaron, the rod that budded. It was supernatural. It, it distinguished him as being the first God-anointed priest leader. Thank God for anointed leaders. So they saw the anointing and the power of God in that box. There was manna in the box. That represented God's provision. Every day he met their needs and he's still the same. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what your financial situation is. But my God, says Paul, will supply your every need according to his riches and glory. He is Jehovah Jireh. He provides, hallelujah. He is more than enough. He is El Shaddai. You'll have to excuse me, but I get more and more excited 
in my mortality. <laughs> and God's protection. Where was God's protection? There were the two tablets and the law. The law is not a negative word. It is Torah. The, the ten It's not a negative term when Paul uses it. The Torah is good. Oh, I love your Torah, oh Lord. I love your instruction. I love your direction. Yes. And so they saw God's presence, God's power and provision. And they kept marching. I'm going to tell you, keep focused on God's power, His presence, His provision, and His protection. Because the word of the Lord will guard us. Succeed him. So I'm reading from the Amplified here. Verse 20. So the people, this is the 13th time round. And now, I mean, they've been going, hey, can you imagine you, you're around seven times, around three times. We've got another four times to go. You go four and then. So they've done this every day and now we've got to do it seven times. Still can't speak. The sixth time, still can't speak. Can you imagine? Oh, I'm just, I've just got to get it out. I can't wait. Not the seventh one. Oh! They shout the battle cry. Thank God they were not English people that were instructed. Oh, Lord. And they shouted, they roared. The battle cry. So the people shouted the battle cry. And the priest blew the trumpets for the chauffeur. And when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, they, they raised a great shout. You can applaud at this bit. And the walls of Jericho fell down. <laughs> so the sons of Israel went up into the city. Every man straight ahead, climbing over the rubble, and they overthrew the city. We know the archaeology, archaeology has proved that this. And we also know that it's been proved that the walls didn't go like that. They just went down. Yes. Some think it was an earthquake. Well, if it was an earthquake, God sent it. Yeah. And if God didn't send it, he knew when it was coming. Yeah. And that's why he kept their timing. God knows when your breakthroughs come in. That's why you've got to keep your timing right. So the why? So let's sum this up. We will succeed when we listen to God's instruction, obey, and don't give up. Galatians six nine says. We will reap a harvest. Yeah. We, if we keep sowing, we will reap a harvest. Yeah. If we don't give up. Mm. So what does Jericho represent for us? Loads. It can mean lots of things. You're facing your Jerichos. You see, Jericho is that which stood in. God says, that land's yours to those people. That was the promise. And God has promised us to bless us with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. But there are obstacles. There will always be obstacles to overcome. That's the test of our faith. So what are our Jerichos? Well, what are the barriers? It's anything that's a barrier. Maybe it's an inner weakness. We need to deal with that Jericho. Maybe it's an impossible situation that you're facing right now. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe you don't get the opportunities. Many years ago, I, I just knew God had called me to preach this long before I moved to Sussex. And this is long before I met Jane and all this. All I knew was that God had put something in my heart to preach. And I'd say, open for me a door of opportunity. And he didn't. For months and months and months. He probably even more than months. And I just kept, and I'd say to God, God, if you don't take, either take this out or open that door. If I've just dreamed this thing up, 
and seeing myself preaching to the multitudes, if I'm drinking it, just take it out. I don't want that false thing in my life. Or make it happen. Well, it made it happen. He told me to get my passport and travel to the nations. I've been to the nations. And I'm going to go to the nations again when the lockdown lifts. Amen. Amen. But you see, whatever it is, and I'm saying, I don't have the opportunity. And maybe you're saying this, watching this live or recording or wherever you are or in this room. I don't have the opportunity. Well, make one. Start praying into one. You know, I look down the acumen of my ministry of rivers. and Every day I pray through rivers. Lord, that rivers ministries will bring revival, intimacy, victory, equipping. Reality and simplicity. I pray into it. I pray into it. Every obstacle, every brick of the wall, boom, down you go. Whatever it is, lack of expectation. What do you really expect? Well, the service to end very soon, I hope. And I'll go home. be the same old, same old? Or do you expect God to break through into your life? Deal with that lack of expectation and that Jericho war. Go, shh, I'll break it through. Or maybe it's COVID-19 itself. Oh, as we said, it'll never be the same again. Well, no, it's going to be better. People won't come back to church. No, they'll run back to church. <coughs> come on. <coughs> oh, this, this virus is always going to be with us. We'll probably have to have a vaccination every year, maybe. The Spanish flu in 1918, after two and a half years, three years, it just died. And they didn't have anything, any medication. They didn't understand viruses as we do now. I say to COVID-19, you are dying in Jesus' name. You're going from this coast. You're going from this planet. And I go, come on. So we know God's presence isn't in a box, the ark, but resides within the believer. (coughs) Jesus has broken the spiritual Jericho wall through his blood on the cross. And then he rose from the dead on the third day. And he has the keys of death and hell. The enemy has been plundered. So he invites us to turn to him. Please stand. If, you, if you're able to stand, stand. But if you can't, just stay there. Turn to him now. If you're watching at home, put your hands Jesus, I turn to you now. I turn away from everything. Help me to learn to silence the noise of death. I turn to you and ask you to forgive me and cleanse me afresh. I renew my faith. Or come to you for the first time. And I receive. I receive heaven's gift of Holy Spirit. That will enable me to silence doubt. To march through walls. To do the impossible. Because of the God of the impossible. I receive your spirit. And I commit myself. To follow you. From this day forward. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You see whatever our Jericho is. This is the time to silence the dance.
No weapon formed against us will prosper. The Lord is on our side. We can do all things through Christ. Thank you, Freddie, for that. That was great, as always. Okay, well, we'll finish with our, our song. Um, I can find out what it was. Oh, yes, this is our God. Our God is still the same. And so we're just going to sing, this is our God.